With Razer releasing a second revision to one of my favorite wireless gaming mouse, is it worth getting over the now discounted Basis Ultimate Gaming Mouse? Hi, what's up everybody, I'm Edward. In today's video, I'm going to help you decide if the Razer Basis V3 Pro is right for you. I'll be doing a quick unboxing while going over my initial impressions of the design and the features, while pointing out what was improved compared to the original Basis Ultimate and if it made any difference for me over the past 5 months. And if at any time during today's video, you feel that the Basis V3 Pro might not be right for you, watch on to the end and I will recommend a couple of other wireless gaming mouse that will deliver a similar flagship level performance. So hit that subscribe button if you're new to this channel and let's spin up the details. Opening the surprisingly small for a flagship box, you're immediately greeted by the Basis V3 Pro, which looks identical to the first Basis Ultimate. Taking it out of the box, the first thing I immediately noticed was the different textured plastic that was used for the one smooth mouse buttons, which was a welcoming change for me. This new textured finish helped a lot against resisting that plasticky shine as you can see here. No shine after 5 months. Yet, other than the texture difference, the form and dimensions of the body largely remains the same except that the DPI clutch on the left side is now not removable and could get accidentally pressed sometimes if you have long fingers. Another welcoming change is that the micro USB port has finally been replaced with USB-C charging and the port can now fit almost any cable you want. As for the weight, the Basis V3 Pro is 4 grams heavier than the Basis Ultimate at 112 grams, but I honestly can't feel the difference between the two. Flipping the mouse over, I was immediately happy to see the Bluetooth connectivity icon next to the power switch, which was a feature missing on the original Basis Ultimate. With the original Basis Ultimate, you could only connect wirelessly via the 2.4GHz, which consumed more power than Bluetooth along with an USB port. The layout has also been slightly redesigned with slightly larger PTFE mouse feed, and the rear feed has been changed to accommodate the wireless charging puck. I personally like the U-shaped design more because when lifting off to reposition the mouse, there is now less drag thanks to the feet. Opening the compartment, there is a storage space for the wireless dongle, and the cap can be replaced with a Razer Wireless Qi Charging compatible puck that could be purchased separately for $20 or in a bundle with a mouse for cheaper if it's on sale. As for the other accessories that comes with the mouse, there is a USB-A dongle adapter extension, a Speedflex braided USB A to C cable that measures at 1.9 meters long, and the usual manual and stickers. Now, for the features of the Basis V3 Pro, the biggest upgrade compared to the Basis Ultimate would be the new and improved 30K Focus Pro sensor that can also work on glass surfaces that's at least 2 millimeters thick. It does have a slightly higher PPI for slightly faster and more accurate tracking, but I don't know about you, but 30K DPI is kind of an overkill and unnecessary in my opinion. I mean, do any of you guys or ladies game at more than 10k DPI? If you do, please let me know in the comments what the benefits are if you do. Along with the new sensor, the Basis V3 Pro now also has the ability for 2000 and 4000 Hz polling, while on the Ultimate it was limited to 1000 Hz. To use these faster polling rates, you could either pair with Razer's new Mouse Dock Pro, which you could check out the separate review I did by clicking up here or down there or the wireless hyper-polling dongle if you want to save money. But either way, you can only get 2K and 4K Hz polling via a wireless connection, and it will drain the battery a lot faster while consuming a little more CPU resources. I mean, for someone who has never bothered with more than 1K Hz polling, I did find that switching to a higher polling rate did in fact result in slightly more smooth movements and accurate aiming in shooters, but I seriously still can't tell the difference between 2K and 4K polling rates. Theoretically, 4K polling should provide even lower input latency, better accuracy and tracking speed, but with me running my games mostly at around 100 frames per second on average, the extra polling couldn't make a difference. And the battery drain was so much more at 4K Hz polling that I decided to stick to 2K Hz polling. But in the end, it's good that the option is there if you're willing to trade off 2 to 3 days worth of battery life. Now, another feature, new feature of the Basis V3 Pro that was implemented due to popular demand is the free spinning scroll wheel. By simply pressing a button, you can switch between tactile scrolling or free spin. And as a bonus, you can enable a hybrid mode via Razer's Synapse app so that when you start scrolling faster, the scroll wheel will automatically change from tactile to free spin and then back when you stop. 
I personally don't use this feature because I find that it's a little unreliable. If Sometimes if I scroll a little harder than usual, it will trigger the free spin mode. And sometimes when I want it to go into free spin, it doesn't. But yeah, it's still a fun little feature to play with. Other upgrades compared to the Basis Ultimate include the Gen 3 optical switches, which are now rated to last longer for up to 90 million clicks as opposed to 70 million, and the wireless charging feature. For the new switches, I find that they provide a slightly more crisp feedback with almost no pre-travel compared to the Basis Ultimate. And there's also less wobble to the left and right mouse buttons. Here's how they sound like. As for the wireless charging, the old dock was cool being able to display your mouse and all that while charging, but many, including myself, found that it has reliability issues as it would often not charge the mouse due to poor contact. With wireless charging, that problem is gone, but it will cost you. I mean, it's convenient and a lot easier to use than the old dock, but with its limited compat compatibility for now, getting the Razer Chroma charging pad will still give you the Chroma effect while allowing you to also charge your phone. So, having gone over the key features of the Basis V3 Pro, who's this mouse for? Having spent a little over two years with this particular form factor, I would recommend this for gamers looking for a feature-loaded mouse that comes with a thumb rest, making it super comfortable for extended gaming sessions. With this form factor, I have never experienced any fatigue with my claw and palm grip even after six to eight hours of gaming. But with its 100 plus grams of weight, it's not the lightest or the fastest. So if you're looking for something that's fast and easy to reposition for those ultra-intense competitive online matches, consider picking up a mouse like the Razer Viper V2 Pro. Or if you prefer a mouse that's still comfortable and lightweight but has a conventional shape, mouse shape, then the Death Adder V3 Pro is another great choice. Alright, thank you as always for watching. If you enjoyed today's video and find it helpful, hit that like button as it will help this channel a lot more than you know it, and I'll see you again in the next video. Ciao!